Hello everyone and welcome to the Gloom Time Society. My name is Alexander Ward and I am your GM for this evening, which stands for Gloom Master. With me I have four wonderful players, Xander Genre, Michelle Wynn Bradley, Laser Weber, and Joe Johnson. We will be playing the Gloomhaven RPG today, which is a new system that we are debuting right now. The city of Gloomhaven, on the coast of the Misty Sea, deep within the eastern wilds, rests atop the ruins of the ancient capital of Eastport, which was the center of all knowledge and trade in the world. Humans built friendly relationships with the Savas, the Orchids, and the Quatrels, and thrived, developing technologies and creating great cultural achievements. This was where the Seeker's Tower was built, and it became the epicenter of what was known as the Upheaval. The city was destroyed, and the site became known as the Void. In the centuries after, humans made contact again with the Orchids and the Quatrels and decided, and decided to build a port city on the eastern shores of the continent to set up a trade network. They used the old ruins as a foundation, and they were quick to repair the old walls to keep out the invading Vermlin and Enox. All the races came together to build this city, seeing it both as a valuable location to inhabit, but also an important symbol of harmony. It was named Gloomhaven, based on the old stories passed down about how a gloom emerged and destroyed the land. This city would provide a haven from the gloom. Gloomhaven has remained a very important trade city and tactical location. The western part of the city, up to the old docks and the Traveler's District, was built up from the old ruins and comprises the original Gloomhaven. The city has since expanded, however, reaching east and requiring new walls to be built. The new sections of the city include the new market, the coin district, and the new docks. Our story starts in the sinking market. Located in the southwest area of Gloomhaven, generally considered to be the slums, a hotbed of crime and low-income housing, and containing a pretty robust black market. It fell into disrepair over time due to the fact that the area is very slowly sinking into the ocean, and no one can explain why. A large part of the sinking market is now underwater, and no one with the money has any interest in investigating and making it better. You four have a rented room in a small tavern. You've just finished a job, which you made a small amount of coin, most of which was spent on renting this room. You will now figure out what your next move is in the future as a group, but until then, you are spending the evening relaxing and recuperating. Please introduce yourselves. Xander Genre, and I use he, him pronouns, but today I am playing Meadowhawk, which is a collective of insects, so <laughs> collectively we'll use they, them pronouns. That's uh, they are a harrower, mm. which again is this swarm of various insects, and to make other people comfortable, they sort of uh, take the form of a humanoid. Mm. Uh, so in this room you can see there is the familiar, if not unsettling, buzzing of, <laughs> of uh, insects underneath a cloak that maybe have some belongings that are, are dangling around in there too. Uh, and you can hear a heavy breathing almost as there is wind passing through some dragonfly wings symbolizing vocal cords. Uh, and they speak out and they say, we need to rest. And they sort of slump over and begin resting. Perfect. Meadowhawk uh, is a harrower, but they're also a blade swarm, which is the class here. So you can see that there seem to be some gossamer blades tucked away amongst these, mm. uh, these robes as well. They sort of rub against each other, making another droning noise, but it's relaxing, <laughs> like crickets. <laughs> Uh, all right, Michelle. Hi, I'm Michelle and Bradley. I'm always sitting next to this ding dong. Um, <laughs> my character name is Grob, and I am a Savas Elementalist. Uh, so Savas are the rock people of Gloomhaven. We are born from the rock. We become conscious from the rock. We have no mother or father. The, our parents are rocks. Um, <laughs> and we spend our time trying to develop uh, our mastery over the elements, which you can see in this weird, like, clear belly that we have that has little lights in it representing our elements that we've mastered. Ooh. And uh, Grob is uh, a medium-sized creature. Uh, consider I think written down here it says monster, but that fe I feel offended about that. Uh, <laughs> and Grob has a love of... Uh, overcoats, and I'm looking at the figure, it's great. Also they, them, right? Oh, and also they, them, yes, uh, thank you. And uh, Grub is usually Savas, they, in their um, 
We're gonna call it Savas Rock University, because I don't know, man. Rock University. Someone, someone yelled at me. That's wrong. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's that's canon now. Yep. And uh, I've I've just been studying for so long, and I've I've mastered all the elements, and I I did my thing, and now I'm just like, well, time to go on an adventure, and that is why I'm in Gloomhaven with this this guy over here. These, we are not a guy. These little these little <laughs> things. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's that's Grob. Grob, Grob, Grob. G R O B. We love you. I don't really know what to say to that. It's weird. God, yeah, please sit down. I am Laser, and I am playing a character named Simon, who, like me, is a he him. Simon is a vermling, which means he's a cool little rat guy. <laughs> Uh, he, you know, they're outcasts. They have an animalistic appearance. Um, they are known for, you know, being on the on the dark side of the law. But you know, screw laws. Yeah. And uh, I also have a companion who is a beast, who is a bear-sized house cat, <laughs> whose name is Mark. So uh, after our long day, um, uh, Simon's out. He gives a nice brush to Mark and they brush through the fur, and then. He coming inside. Hey everybody, is it time to party? Or no, we're sleeping. Okay, we can sleep, that's fine. Also, Meadowhawk is my best friend. Oh, good to um, see you. <laughs> so good to see you too. And my class is Wild Fury, which means I have some control over certain kind of natural elements, and also I have my big bear-sized cat friend. Oh, you brought Mark. Of course I brought Mark. Uh, Joe. Yeah, hey, what's going on, y'all? <laughs> <laughs> How did I get roped up into this? <laughs> Let me tell you how. Um, my name is Joe Johnson. Uh, go by he, him pronouns, as well as my character, Clancy Carmichael. I am a human bruiser. And um, I'm sure you're wondering, how did a human get uh, mixed into all this? Record scratch. Uh, yeah. Um, I was uh, ex-military, and I was kind of just, you know, minding my own business, traveling out, trying to see, you know, some different sights. And I was in a boat, and I got hoisted up and into this station and I done some research because ex-military I learned some stuff about these individuals and I went ahead and got them loose from their cages. We are innocent. So uh, yeah, now I'm kind of stuck. What does Clancy look like? Oh Clancy, uh, six foot seven, very uh, you know, wow. statuesque, <laughs> Michael Clark Duncan kind of shout out. Uh, you know, cross between that and like Luke Cage. Yeah. Um, just very gentle giant until it goes down. Thank you, everyone. So, you're all in the small room of the tavern taken up mostly by a house, a cat that is the size of a bear. And you're kind of planning your next move as a group as to what you're going to do in the future. If you're all thinking about it, not, you know, no formal meeting or anything like that. It's all playing on your mind. But tonight is a night for relaxation and uh, engaging in, uh, you know, hobbies and a way to recuperate from the strain of your last mission. I have a hobby, it's knitting. I like to knit with plants. It's like a natural fibers kind of situation. So, I'm uh, making a new kind of leaf hat for Mark, my large cat. Amazing. Wait, what's Mark wearing now? Mark had a different hat. It was the flowers were wilting, so we're doing a new one. And there's holes for his little ears. Oh. It's oh, really flowers. cute. Meadowhawk is still like resting in a sort of bent over bundle, but there is like a chin on a hand sort of thing happening yes. as they watch this happening. Uh, they're fascinated by the knitting and the, the weaving of things together to make something else. What um, coloration is Mark? Oh, Mark the cat. Um, it's, a, <laughs> it's a tuxedo cat. Uh. Yeah. Gorgeous, beautiful. Important for information it. inquiring Absolutely. minds want to know. Yeah. Absolutely. And what does Simon look like? Simon is also covered in fur. Right. Um, I think Simon's also a tuxedo color. <laughs> <laughs> so we can kind of mix together. <laughs> Ready for any gala. Yeah. We are formal outcasts from society. <laughs> we just got broken out of jail because we tried to break into a party. <laughs> but listen, we should have been invited, and that's on them. Yeah, Grob is just doing Grob stuff over in the corner. Um, I've got uh, I've got my cool uh, Savas Rock University sweatshirt on. We're <laughs> yes. really relaxing. I talk about it all the time. It's one of my uh, hold on, just real quick though. It is one of my backgrounds that if we talk about my formal education, I get bonuses. Oh yeah. <laughs> so it's gonna get real annoying real quick. Um, and I've got a lot of books and. I'm just over there just kind of being like, you know, you both are wasting time with your hobbies. I feel like we should be trying to solve the sinking 
port. It is hard. It's a sinking market. Market. A sinking market problem. Everyone's like, why is it sinking? Rocks. Do you want me to knit you some socks? Are your feet wet? I don't need warm or boots. I'm good. Okay. Okay. As all this is going on, I cannot sleep at all. <laughs> <laughs> so I was wondering if there's like a tavern nearby that I could just like... There is. There, there is a tavern downstairs. You're, you're, this is a a rather ramshackle three-story affair that you're in right now. You're on the top floor, and there is a small, little bit grimy tavern in the very base floor. Um, if you want to go down there, you absolutely can. I think I would like to. Okay, great. So, uh, you go to the door, you open it, and as you do, you uh, a smell hits your nostrils. Just a very acrid, sort of smoky smell. And definitely something that's not supposed to be there. Not the normal sort of wet, dingy smell of the sinking market, but a very, uh, it smells like a fire. And that's not normal. Uh, say guys, I think this boat's on fire. What? Yeah, we need to get up out of here. Okay, I mean, like, fire doesn't affect me personally, but you all are organics, and that's a problem for you. We just bought the room. Well, we can go to sleep and die. Okay. Clancy has a good point. Yeah. I think we should not do that. Should okay. we just leave, like, or should we try to take care of the problem, or do we just bounce? Like, what's the plan? Leader? <sighs> I'm tired, but you're right. Just leave? Leave everyone in here? No, we just, we should go try to figure out the fire situation. I don't know why I'm the leader. That's why. Because I don't want to do it. <sighs> very tall. Yeah, you're very tall. The tall is really, Okay, let's, let's figure it out. Is it that exact moment that you hear a slam <laughs> and you feel the shaking of the building as though almost like a cart has rammed into the side of the building and you hear, you start to hear screams and panic outside. You're hearing, uh, there seems to be some sort of commotion that's happening on the street level. Is there a window in the room that way? There is a window. Uh, uh, I'm gonna have Meadowhawk, they walk over and lift the window open, mm -hmm. uh, however it happens, and they have an ability called Bug Body, mm -hmm. uh, and they gain flying for 10 minutes. Okay. So the swarm is going to fly out of the window and above to try to see what's happening outside. Wonderful. So you use this ability, you kind of, you sort of break apart into this cloud, and it escapes through the window and flows up into the, into the sky, that's the word, sky. Um, and <laughs> looking down, unfortunately, the window opens up into an alleyway that is not, nothing down there seems to be amiss. You can see off to your left where the street, uh, the main street is, that there is, that is definitely where the sound is coming from. Uh, it, does there seem to be like an active fire? And is this on the other side of the building we're currently in? Okay. Uh, yeah, they'll swarm back into the room and sort of reform in front of the others. Mm, they've crashed into this building. It's still, it's really still hard to. Uh, Ooh, we should leave. Yeah, after all this time, okay. Never gonna get used to that. Nope. Uh, mm -mm. So you're starting to hear more and more commotion. There's, there seems to be panic outside. You're hearing uh, clattering noises. It seems like there was a rather large accident outside, and you're starting to hear it coming up, and you're starting to hear other patrons in the tavern. While this isn't a big building, there are other people staying here, and you're starting to hear them come out into the hallways and asking questions. It feels like a good time for me to scamper and investigate. So I'm gonna go scamper down and investigate. <laughs> Wonderful, so. Scamper, scamper, scamper. <laughs> are you leaving through the front door or some other means? Um, I'll probably go through the door, yes. Okay. Um, I do also, I have the ability to scurry which there means um, I can travel up to 20 feet instantly, moving through other creatures without penalty. Wow. So if I do run into like a little crowd, I might try to pop Get to the other the, side. Yeah, okay. So going through the, the front door of your room here, you enter into a small hallway. And to your left is about two other rooms and then a dead end, which is the end of the hallway. And then to your right is one more room on the left side of the hallway. And then there's a stairway going down. Great. In exiting into this hallway, you see that most of the doors are still closed. You can see that another person has kind of opened their door and are looking around, obviously hearing the commotion and wanting to investigate, but no one's coming out of their rooms yet. I'm scampering down the stairs. Like Go ahead, little, down like the stairs. Like a stair. cute little scamper guy. Great. <laughs> As you start moving down the stairs, you're starting to see that smoke, you obviously are also smelling the yeah. smoke, but you're starting to now see this black smoke starting to come up 
the stairway. It's starting, whatever's down there is starting to get worse. I hear. And um, you get down to the second floor, and there's much more commotion down there. There's people running down the hallways. There's only a few rooms on this floor as well, but definitely people are starting to try and evacuate. Um, no one's managed to make their way up to tell you anything's wrong, but the people on the second floor definitely felt the vibration and the shock a lot more, and uh, were, are more entrenched in the smoke. The smoke is definitely heavier down here. Got it. I think I might scamper back up and say, let's get out of here, <laughs> and perhaps the window. Okay, um, are we just gonna leave everyone in this building? Are we gonna do a save everyone thing, or are we just gonna get out the window? Doesn't feel like something would be paid for. I mean, I'm fine either way. I'm just asking if we're, let's get a consensus. Let's get everybody, let's get everybody out of this building. I'm running down there, so I'm gonna run down the hallway downstairs. Okay, down the hallway, and uh, start knocking on doors, yeah. trying to alert people, okay. Hey, 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 there's a fire, get out. Let me fire! <laughs> that is, listen to them. Fire! Yep, yep, they're even more scared. The, you knock on a, the number of the doors in the hallway of this upper floor, and the one that you did see uh, someone residing in does open the door and starts, you can see they've already packed their things and they're starting to rush on. They start running down the stairway. Uh, it seems like the other doors in this room are either empty or the people are not responding. I will uh, jump down and see the leader is trying to do some stuff, some nice stuff for the other organics, and uh, I start to kick down doors. <laughs> I'm not real. The thing is, even though I'm a rock person, I'm kind of like a little, like comparatively to my brothers and sisters, like smallish. I'm not very strong, but I'll try it. I'll give it. I'll give it a shot. I'm real good at books, though, guys. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> there is. Um, there's two doors off to the left of your room, and there's one door off to the right. Uh, one of the doors that's on the opposite side of the hallway from where you're staying was where this person has since vacated. So you know that room is empty. There's one door at the end of the hallway and there's one next to the stairway heading down. Which door are you going to? I'll go to the far one. Go to the far one. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and have you try and knock down this door yeah. as you so stated. Heck yes. I'm gonna say just uh, as a preface that Meadowhawk is watching this happen <laughs> as a thing for something else. So I'm gonna have you make an ability or an attribute check, which is going to be an athletics Dude. attribute. I've check. got a one yeah. in athletics. Got a one in athletics. So you, everybody has four background cards yes. uh, that were chosen in the character creation. You can expend these background cards and then flip them over. And until you do a short rest, I believe, mm -hmm. um, it is gone. Okay. Once you do a short rest, they are all refreshed and you can use them again, but they are an expendable resource that you have. So my athletics is pretty low. It's one. I'm kicking in a door. I don't know how hard that is. I mean, let's just burn these things. Yeah. So I'm going to use my background of loner because I don't have any friends. I just have books. This is a plus two if no one aids this check. Uh, so now I'm at three as my base and I'm going to flippity floppity. It's a four, right? This bottom one? Yes, it is. Four, five, six, seven. What was the number I had to beat? Well, the number you had to beat was definitely below a seven. So you do succeed. <laughs> you run down to the end of the hallway. You get to this door that is locked. Um, you rear back and you get ready. You prep yourself. You remember all your gym classes over at university. <laughs> and you, you wind up and you slam your foot into this door and it breaks surprisingly easily. You, these doors seem to be a little um, mildewy. Mm. And I it kind of box. just folds in on itself and then you bust into the room and it is dark. And I just kind of yell, uh, building's on fire, probably leave. I'm done. And I just, <laughs> I, look so, around, I look around a second though. Okay, you look around a second. It's very dark in there. You can't really see a lot, but you do hear movement. Things I should burn. Um, I, <laughs> burn it, burn it. I, I'm gonna just yell one more time. If you're gonna leave, now's a good time. I've got other stuff to do, and I was told to do. I don't really. I'm not really gonna look around. Uh, I, and something happened. <laughs> Does something happen? I don't happen? know. <laughs> well, because if not, I'll, I'll move on. Um, <laughs> you do notice in the gloom of this room. The gloom. <laughs> Every time you say it, you gotta <laughs> take a drink. Um, that the window is open. It's just something you noticed. Okay, I'm gonna leave now, bye. And then I just go to the next door. <laughs> okay, as you start to leave, you hear movement in there, like someone's inside. I stick my head out the door, and I call down to you all, who, and I just I see that you're watching me down the hallway, <laughs> being very weird. <laughs> hey, um, so I think there's someone in here, but they don't wanna leave, there's a window open, should I do anything, or just? Let them burn. 
Oh, okay. Anyone else want to weigh in? Oh, you're, you're not up there, right? You're still downstairs. Oh, yeah. I, I'll, I'll come back. I'm, I'm upstairs. Um, we're on the same floor. I think uh, I'm just like, oh, you need help? And I would like to jump on the back of my giant bear-sized cat Incredible. and and just scamper right into this room. Right. Who needs help? You can, you can, uh, we can help you. Okay, I back out of the room and just let the cat take care the of it. And the cat bear goes running into the room. <laughs> uh, it is dark in there. I mean, that's night okay. Vision. That's okay. I'm. Do you I, have night vision? I don't, I, cats do, I don't. <laughs> uh, it's too bad you're not a cat. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's fair. Um, so you go into this dark room. Yeah. And um, you can hear some like movement over by the bed and like rustling. Dark enough we can't see it. It's all. pretty dark in there. All the lights are off. There is a window open, but the it's the same wall that is facing the alley that the alley your there. room is. So there's not really any light there. Uh, hello. Hello there. I would like to I'm like <laughs> you gotta get out of here. On fire. Hey, is, is there electricity in this world? I'm sure no. is, there, is there a switch? You said the no. lights are off. Okay. Well, but there is, say, there is a, a lamp. There is like an oil lamp on the table you could light. I'll do that. Okay. You light the lamp. And as you do, you realize there's someone in the bed. Okay. <gasps> Sleeping? Is it a friend? They're moving. Great. Um, I'm gonna shake them. Okay, you do. Uh, what? Building's on fire. Uh, uh, and this very, very grizzled, rough looking guy oh. gets up who has clearly had too much to drink. Um, we've been there. And gets out, no shirt, just like breeches, <laughs> and just kind of stumbles out of the room and starts walking down the hall. Good job, buddy. I believed in you the whole time. There we go. No one else left in the room. And uh, there's one more door in this hall. You solved the mystery. Good job, kid. <laughs> I did it. I think it was. Are we all on the same floor? I think I was running downstairs. You're, oh. you're gonna go. You're gonna go down We're that stairs. To the, okay. To the bottom. Yeah. So as you go down the stairs, smoke's getting thicker. There's definitely a fire. Um, and it seems like everybody on this second floor has started. It's pretty much evacuated. You can see all the doors are open. Uh, they got the message a long time before you all did. Uh, but there is one door at the end of the hallway that seems to be closed, and you can hear a thumping, like someone's knocking on it from the inside. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna run down there and try to knock on the door, and like, hey, hey, somebody in there? And you cheer, thump, thump, thump. Is the smoke like super heavy? It's starting to get heavier. <coughs> All right, I'm gonna kick the door down, get away! And I'm gonna use epic kick on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Epic kick. So you have epic kick, which requires a discard to activate. I believe, correct? Yes, it does. So you'll discard one of those. Okay. Now, if that card was something you really didn't want to lose, there is something we can do about that. But if you're fine with losing it, I'm we don't. Have to, losing okay, that we don't That's have to fine. cover that yet. Yeah. Read to me what epic kick does. Uh, epic kick. I can break down uh, any door or object. And, uh, or it flies 20 feet away. Okay, you rear back, you gather yourself, you bring that boot up and you slam it into that door and it just splinters off the hinges and flies into the room. The whole door as a whole just breaks off and whoosh, flies into the room and slams into the opposite wall. There's nothing in that room. There's just some grime and some, looks damp in there, but nothing, no one was there to make that noise. As far as you can tell. This is not good. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving, I'm turning around. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you turn around, you head down the hallway. All the other rooms seem to be empty. All the other doors are open. Now, the three of you are still on the third floor. Yeah. There is one door left to check right. that is closed. Oh, definitely going to check this. After watching um, Grop do this, uh, I'm going to be breaking down the door as well. Unbeknownst to Grop, it's not really a reciprocated thing. Uh, they have a friendly rivalry. <laughs> <laughs> if you're testing an attribute that your rival just tested, okay. if you don't get a better result, I have to add a pain point to my deck, but I okay. could get it potentially uh, better. All right. So, what is this? Will be another athletics ability check. And I what have is, a plus three. Oh, you have athletics. a three base. Okay, so go ahead and flip me a modifier. Oh, it's two. 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 Okay. So, what is the total? Six, eight total. Eight. You did do better. Yeah. This uh, the collective sort of rears back what seems to be a foot, 
and the first wave of insects sort of hit it, and then a second wave as like where the head was comes through and <laughs> slams it open uh, with a headbutt. Okay, you slam it open. Uh, this opens into another dark room, but as you look into it, you see that this room is under construction. There's no one in here. This has been a room that's been locked because no one's using it. Uh, it's got a lot of uh, like just old wood and rotting kind of like, we, they hadn't quite finished building this room and they never got around to finishing it. Attempting to emulate like a, yeah. a, a security force. The, <laughs> the, the collective spreads out and investigates the whole room and then comes back and forms and says, clear. Okay, great. So you, you clear that room and um, now you know that all of these rooms on this top floor have been cleared. So you're free to go. On that floor, where you are, the second floor, the smoke is starting to get thicker and you're starting to hear a cacophony from downstairs. You're really starting to hear like things slamming around. You're hearing shuffling feet. You're hearing people run. And the smoke is getting thicker. Hey, I'm gonna go check the first floor. Get out of here. All right, do you all end up running down the stairs? Where do no, you go? we disperse. Okay. <laughs> And we'll go out the window. And you'll go out the window. Where How big are the windows? Are Relative. they bear size? No. All oh, right. <laughs> no, it's like you, you know, uh, like a small hotel room window. Okay. Well, you then think I think they're bears. <laughs> With a lot we're of go, We're gonna lumber down the stairs. Lumber down the stairs. <laughs> I follow the cat down the stairs because I like looking at the tail. It's nice. Right. <laughs> uh, swish, swish, swish. So the three of you are heading down the stairs to the first floor, and you have gone out the window. Now, as you get back to your room where the open window was, which is, I assume, where you're going out the window, yeah. um, you look before you leap. So, oh, wow. And, uh, Good for them. <laughs> you, you go stick your head out the window as though you're going to take flight out the window, and you look down, and you see the fire is definitely spreading around the side of the building, and it's starting to come up the walls towards where your room is. So this alleyway is starting to fill with fire, but it looks almost liquidy. It's starting to, like, travel along the walls. But it is definitely getting dangerous in this alleyway. Yeah, so the plan is to uh, go out the window and ride, ride the thermal that's okay. being created yeah. by this fire to get back to the front to meet up with everybody. Great, you fly out and you're going around to the front of the building. You three are going down the stairs. You run down and you're getting past the second floor which is starting to fill with smoke but still relatively recognizable as a place that is not on fire. And you head down to the first floor and when you get to the first floor, it is a mess. It is chaos. There are the people who own the tavern have all evacuated or at least tried to and this place, they've taken what they want, they wanted to keep and they have, no one seems to be there. But you are hearing out on the street, there is running, there is yelling, there is commotion and then you look towards the front door and that is exactly where this carriage has slammed into the front of the building and has caused a collapse in the front of the building. Now, this area at the far end towards the front door is on fire. The fire is starting to spread around the front of the door, but it is not reached where the stairs are yet, towards the back of the room. Now, you're starting outside, you're hearing a lot of shuffling and moving, and it sounds like groaning, almost like someone's hurt, which would make sense outside, via yeah, there's this crash and this sort of commotion happening. You in the air travel around to the front, and you see a sight. There is this carriage, in fact, crashed into the front of the building. The building is, in fact, on fire, but there's more. There seems to be a lot of people out front, a lot of figures shambling around, moving, uh, all different directions starting to just move about the city. They're not necessarily moving away from the fire, though. They don't seem to be too concerned about the crash and the carriage. It's not like people are trying to help, it's just, movement and because of the smoke from the fire you're having a hard time seeing exactly what is going on down there but you are seeing the movement does it seem like anybody's trying to do anything about either the carriage or the fire no 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 so uh meadowhawk then they'll come down to try to pull this carriage away okay from as you're the building. getting down you're realizing this the heat is intense yeah it's gonna end the, the fact that you are a collection of a small swarm of bugs. You get crispy. Yeah, you get yeah. crispy really quick. And the smoke so, doesn't help either. It does We're not. all sleepy. Yeah. We know. <laughs> <laughs> no. So you're getting, you get, you start to, you have this thought of I'm gonna help these people. I'm gonna go down there and help fix this problem. But as you get about halfway there, it, the heat becomes too intense and going not toward worth it. As you get down close enough, 
close to the carriage. You see that there are people near the front of the building, but they don't aren't concerned with the carriage. They seem like they're trying to get into the town. Huh. Like they're they're. Regardless of their own city. Regardless of their own city, they're trying to get in. And you three in the main part of the tavern start hearing thuds on the windows. And you start hearing people trying to get in. What in the Gloomhaven is going on? There <laughs> <laughs> we did it. <laughs> are there people in this room that are trying to escape? Or no, you said it's empty, basically. This Everybody... this direct room that is empty, there are some doors that lead off like to a kitchen area and okay. things like that that you haven't looked in. But in this main tavern area, there's no one left in there. Well, I want to get help because it's on fire. Okay. And that's not a place I want to be. No. Um, I, I I mean is the front kind of the, the, the main front exit? door has been destroyed by the carriage just slammed okay. into the front of it and kind of collapsed that front part of the building which is also where the fire happens to be starting from the spreading but there is a door to the kitchen and there is uh there are windows that are now kind of stained black with smoke so you can't really see out of them but you feasibly could break one if you wanted to gotcha um what feels right a, a, a back door or a window could i use my Knowledge of buildings. I don't know. I have I a mean, lot of yeah, knowledge. Why, I feel like I should go use ahead. This. What What are you trying to do exactly? I would like to use just my knowledge of layouts of buildings. Uh, okay. Uh, to see if I. Else is just gonna work. No, idiot. What do you think? Knowledge. My strongest <laughs> debt. <laughs> why do what you could you remember can make you read uh, about? Okay. Yeah. What What exactly are you trying to find to, out? To escape. To find a door that goes to the outside. Okay. Go ahead and make me a knowledge check. Doing it. So I am starting at a base of four. So okay. I'm Oh, that's a six, it's a 10. Hey, nice. all right, so, that's, so you are very well acquainted with buildings. You built this building. I, did, I know everything about <laughs> you, rocks. You, you, know the, you know the whole layout of buildings. Yeah. So you are making an attribute check for uh, knowledge on buildings. You've, your base was a three and you've rolled a six? I, I or rolled, drawn a six? I flipped a six. You flipped a six, flipped okay. A six. So a total of nine, which is definitely enough for you yeah. to have succeeded in this check. Now you, are a learned individual. You are someone who uh, has gone to school. I went to, it's called Savas Rock University. I mentioned it earlier. I've got the shirt on, so even though I don't need to wear clothes because I'm a rock person, what else can I tell you about rocks? <laughs> In going to school, you had a lot of, uh, you know, GE courses. And uh, one of those things was, you know, general layouts of buildings. You know, looking at the building and uh, just kind of having a general knowledge and a thought pops into your head that there is one, probably a back door through the kitchen. And two, buildings like this usually have uh, like sewer access through the basement, like through like a grate down there. There is a way out that way possibly as well. Okay. Do we want to meet up with the bug friend or do we want to just go out in the, to the sewers or we could go out the back uh, out of the kitchens? Because usually there's like a entrance for the deliveries back there. How do you know that? I've been to a lot of taverns, kid. I know you're just a wee one, but I could do all the years of tavern going. Great. Well, I would love to go out the back door because I, I have, I want to leave. So you outside. Um, you. Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? Well, uh, giving up on trying to move yeah. this cart, we're going to try to, I guess, see where, in general, people are going. Like, okay. where are these? other organics meeting. So at the, you take some time to, as you're floating in this sort of cloud formation above the ground, uh, removed from the smoke and heat, you look down and see that, and from your perspective inside as well, you can see out the windows a little bit. There is, it's smoky and like, you know, when smoke hits glass and it makes that kind of, you know, residue, but you can still sort of see shapes outside. And you can see from inside and from your perspective that there are people figures pressed up against the windows and kind of like hitting at them. And it's starting to get louder. <laughs> it's starting to get louder and they're starting to slam on the windows. And at this very moment, the window breaks. As soon as the window breaks, that's my entrance. Okay. Because that'll be an area where it wouldn't be a lot of fire in the vacuum. Yeah, so the window breaks and from your perspective inside, you see that there are these figures that have been smashed through the window and you get your first look at what these are. And it seems to be a bunch of living skeletons. <sighs> Reaching their hand, their bony fingers through the windows and grasping and, and starting to fall through. And as you see this thing, this, uh, these things 
break the window. You see your opening and you fly through back into the building, reuniting with your friends. And all these windows start to break in the front and the fire starts to spread through the opening of the tavern. And these things seem to be, while affected by the fire, they don't seem to care. They don't seem to feel it. They don't have skin anymore. They are just bones. They're, there's nothing really for them to light other than scraps of clothing and rotting flesh. And they start to stumble in through the front window. Is this like normal? Oh, they sound like us. <laughs> you know what's really fun is sewers. They smell great, there's stuff to eat. Let's get down there. We love it. There is an exit towards the kitchen. There are two double, like, double doors that head towards the kitchen. Do you want to go th through there and see what's in there? I just said, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. As we, as we go into the kitchen, I want to try to find something to bar the doors to the yeah. kitchen so they can't get in. When you, you enter into the kitchen, and it is very uh, rudimentary, this place this wasn't meant to house an abundance of people. It's a pretty rudimentary kitchen. There is a fire, there's a pot over a, a, a rudimentary stove. Um, there is a pretty, a long bench in there that's mm -hmm. next to a table, which you could feasibly like bar the doors with to stop them from trying to come in, kind of so the doors can be pushed open. As uh, Meadowhawk sees you doing this, they're going to go over and grab the other side of the bench and aid you. Uh, uh, they have Optimist. When aiding, give the check advantage. If the one non-rolling card is at least two higher than the other, the check is a crit success. Otherwise, it's a crit fail, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> the bench in and of itself is not super heavy, so it's not an athletics, but I'm gonna say this is going to be uh, a focus check to figure out the best way to jam this in there to kind of make it so it cannot be, it is not passable anymore. So go ahead and make a focus check and you are aiding, correct? All right. Yeah. Let me, uh, I got a two for focus, so. Flip that card. And you, and this gives you him, this, you are aiding, so it gives advantage, so you can flip another card and take the higher oh, okay. So that's a four, and that's three. Okay, so four is going to be the highest. And that's good, but it's yeah. not two away. And no. so it would be a difference that would make it a crit success, but you're still good. Okay. You're still good. Uh, so that was a four, what was your base skill again? So four, and then base focus is two, so that will equal six. Okay, great. So this wasn't particularly hard, it just, you basically, Take this bench, and there there are like uh, kind of wall sconces mm. for light in this room, and you kind of jam the thing up under the the iron sconces that have come up on the wall to kind of stop it from being able to be pushed off. Effectively barring the door, you don't know how, how long it'll hold, mm. but it has been done. Okay. Um, in this kitchen, you can see that there is there is a back door leading out, and there is a grate in the floor that seems to go to a cellar. So door, floor, what, we, what do we want to do? Let's go on the floor, I love the floor. So you start hearing banging on the wall, just bangs, yeah. bangs on the let's door go, to the outside. Go. They're everywhere, we gotta go down. What, uh, can I pull the grate or? Yeah, it, you can go over and make an attempt, just go and lift I it. I would love to make an attempt. All right, you go and grab it. And you lift it and it just comes up. There it comes. Uh -huh. Let's go. Sometimes like to... things are just easy. And you... <laughs> <laughs> there are stairs that lead down into a cellar. Great, I'd like to hop on down. All right, so the door in the floor mm. is just big enough for Mark to get through. Great, that's fine. Uh, just kind of has to squeeze and get down. He's very fluffy, his actual down. body yeah, like, is short. Yeah, it's like, like when, you, seen a when, when you cat. bathe the cat and it gets yeah. really <laughs> awful looking. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he squeezes in, the rest of you follow suit. The way initiative works, when combat starts, you choose two cards from your hand of ability cards. And there are two numbers in the very center of the card. And you can choose either one of those numbers to be your initiative score. Now, technically, the lower the score, the earlier you go in combat. But if you want to go later, then you can pick the higher score. You can pick either one. It just depends on where you want to go. And you can all discuss this as a team to try and kind of figure out what you want to do. And I, as the controller of the creatures, will have my own initiative score. Now, to the start of combat here, we're gonna see who goes first, and I will continue to narrate. But these skeletons are starting to come down that staircase there. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna place some miniatures there, and if you wouldn't all mind placing where your characters are. You will have already come down into this room. This is the stairway mm -hmm. from, this is where the kitchen was, and you're coming down into this room here. Gotcha. And then how far did Meadowhawk like get? Uh, you're about here. Here? Yeah. Okay. Meadowhawk, where you are, yes. is there is a hallway that continues past for more storage and things uh -huh. like that, but you're standing right now on the grate that leads down into the sewer. Gotcha. I suppose I just said everybody get behind me, I'm gonna cast uh, okay. things, so maybe I'll be a little bit yeah. forward. 
Um, so, they listen. <laughs> <laughs> you draw your hand of cards, excluding any cards you have lost or discarded. And then you will choose your initiative from there. Let's just make choices. Just do it. Yeah, just Let's make see. choices. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. If you've all chosen your two cards, mm -hmm. go ahead and give me your initiative, starting with Xander. Uh, Meadowhawk got a five. Oh, ho, ho. Uh, Michelle? Forty. Forty. Fourteen. Fourteen. Why is everyone so low? <laughs> Fifteen. What is happening? Mine are all like sixteen, seventeen. Because you're the wizard. <laughs> first off is going to be Meadowhawk. So the first thing, I have these cards and I can choose the top ability or the bottom ability of each. Of each respective card. Each so card. if you choose the top of one, you have to choose the bottom of the other. So what I'm going to do then is summon the top of Engulfing Stingers, which is summon okay. angry wasps. Hey! So that will put them next to me. Okay. Uh, so we'll just put that there. Great. Uh, and then uh, I'll do the bottom of this other one. My summon gains plus one shield. Oh, that's cool. Great, great, great. All right, a little prep round there. So. Yeah. Next up in the initiative track will be me. So they're gonna start just ending their turn down at the bottom of the stairs. And they're starting to come down here. I really like their little armor. That will be their turn in the end there, so they're not within range to do anything. So it will next be Laser's turn. Great. Uh, all right, I wanna use one of my skills, mm -hmm. which I will do instead of one of these cards as an okay. action. I will discard my Vitality Siphon, Ooh. even though it's a very cool card, to cast Wild Growth. Okay, great. As I mentioned, causing plants to be overgrown in a 10-foot radius. So it's a 10-foot radius. Uh, you can target an area to put it in. I would like to target the middle of where the skeletons are. Okay. <laughs> so we're gonna place some tokens here to represent that. We're gonna go ahead and put these down. Ooh. Oh, boy. Nice. Oh, we love a token. Get out of my way. There we go, and they're gonna be on top of those. <laughs> and then I will use my focused aggression, which is a hit of three, which I believe has a range of three also. Okay. So I wanna hit this guy for three, please. Okay. Wah, I say. <laughs> and that also generates a element of wind. Oh, okay, nice. uh, which one are you targeting? I am targeting him, the, okay. or them. I don't know if they have it, a name. It, I guess. Skeleton. It will be yeah. nice it, since we're going to try to kill it. I think probably <laughs> yeah. it is smart. <laughs> Dehumanize it a little bit. Yeah, make yourself feel better. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't have a family. <laughs> uh, this will be two. Great. So you're hitting it for how much? For three. For three. Because it's focused aggression, because my aggression is focused. Focused. Erg, okay. I say to it. Yarg. Um, so that will be going down. Uh, three, blah, blah, blah. okay. There we go. It's good to know. Okay, so now that you've completed your turn, techni technically speaking, your summon, which is your bear, your cat bear, yes. would go before you, but that's fine. We can have it go after you. You can go ahead and attack with your cat bear. Yes. Mark is going to take a little movement over to here, uh, right up to this little friend, and rawr, in its face, Perfect. which attacks for two. Great, your bear is attacking. Yeah. Go ahead and flip over an attack modifier card. My attack modifier for my kitty is negative one. Negative one. I'll do an attack modifier for my first move, right. for my ranged attack, which was a three, and now is still a three. Hey, Yay. there we go. The damage to the skeleton from your cat-sized yep. bear bear-sized cat, has been resolved. Great. Uh, that's the end of your turn, which we'll move on to you. All right. I want to uh, go stabby-stabby yeah. through, through the bushes. So uh, Clancy will use spare dagger. OK. Um, I can hit something three squares away. So one, one, two, one, two, three. Yeah, that one there. Okay. I don't want to try to hit the cat. I, can't, I can't, probably can't move. Uh, with the line of sight, no. Yeah. yeah. It would be difficult to throw around a bear or cat. That's true. I'm just gonna, uh, um, okay, so this one... You could, if you wanted to move first, you could try and maneuver into a position where you'd have better line of sight and then throw. Uh, okay, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to take this one Okay. Down. I'm trying to take that one down. Yeah, so if I flip that, so that's three three damage, three spaces away. So we'll flip this. a fire card of... Plus, plus one. one. So, four. so four damage. Pull the dagger out of your boot, your spare dagger. You aim and you throw and the 
flips there and slams right into the chest, breaking the clavicle of this skeleton. Its arm kind of starts to droop to the side as it... That's okay. You don't need that no more. <laughs> So where like would you a trash like to can nearby? I can just like... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think you just kind of prepare yourself. Possibly. So where would yeah, you like to... I'll, I'll, move, I'll move two spaces forward. Okay. Just to kind of like shield the rest of the party. Copy and that. And I'll just prepare for the damage. Great. Hey, guys. <laughs> I'm just going to help a little bit. I'm going to use my ice spikes first. So that's a three, uh, three damage, three spaces away on this okay. little dude here. Great. So let's flippity floppity. That's nothing. Okay, so that's just three. Just three. Uh, three to this little boy. Or All right. Girl or How do do you cast your spells? What does it look I like? announce ice spike activate. <laughs> My chest <laughs> open like a little door just goes whoop, and then like the little I got just a bunch of like ice spikes go and they come out and they slam into this skeleton over and over again. All right. Three of them. These ice spikes fly across the battlefield, going right past Mark and slamming into the skeleton just bre and starts breaking bones and snapping sinew and the skeleton falls. <gasps> Incredible. Yeah. As part of that same card, I get to, I do some like, is that an RG hand signal thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. And I switch the elements of uh, the wind that's here to, um, I'm gonna change it to uh, leaf type. Nice. So at the end of uh, my cool ice chest spike situation, I uh, command the elements to switch. <laughs> and I <laughs> change uh, wind into um, earth type. Uh, and that's my ice spikes card. And then my second card, I'm going to be doing pulsing cores. Uh, so at the end of this and my next five turns, in order, I can change elements to either fire and ice, um, wind, or Etc. So for now, I'm going to activate fire. Go. That's the end of my turn. Great. This is the end of the first round. As that round completes, you start to hear more things coming down the stairs. And then you start to notice the walls are starting to leak fluid. But why? Just starting to come down. <laughs> Wait, it's like the room we're in right now. Right. It's crazy how we thought of that. That's wild. I got some in my fingers earlier. You got some. <laughs> Hope it's not bad. And does this, do these move down? Is that how the end of round works? Uh, yeah, I believe so, yes. At the end of the round, those are going to start drift one side over into the um, thing I can't read no. upside down. The waning. waning. I just did this though. Oh, I know. What the heck? Elements don't last forever. Maybe I shouldn't have gone last time. Is anybody using Do elements this turn? Uh, no. I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about the element. Thinking the element, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, Meadowhawk is going to stay here over the grate, um, okay. but we're going to sort of reserve back, so we got a 49. 49. I'll go second to last this time. I'm 45. 45. I have a 17, because I'm ready to party. Yeah. Okay. I have a 13, because I'm even more ready to party. <laughs> <laughs> First off, gonna be Joe. you hear this dripping noise, and it starts to coalesce into these puddles on the floor. I kind of just look back and I'm like, okay guys, I think we should get out of here. <laughs> and I start to take a little step back and I'm gonna run four, four uh, steps, turn and kind of shimmy over here towards the middle and not towards the goo. Uh, and then that will also turn back just in case and I will kind of defend, and I don't know what the punch means. Uh, that means retaliate. So essentially, if someone were to hit you on their turn, they would suffer damage. Okay. So Equal I, to that amount. So I get that plus one, and also yeah. another defense plus one. Great. Okay, so that is my my turn. Great. Uh, next up will be... My cat bear goes first, uh, which is great. Mm, I think we might run away. <laughs> 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 okay, so my bear is going to attack. Uh, Just so you, that one in the front, that other skeleton there, right in the front there, has taken damage. Great. Well, that seems like the kind of animal that would like to be bitten by a cat. Okay. I'm Not sure an animal. Uh, but yeah. okay. Uh, so that's a total of three attack. Three total. Okay. Three attack on the on this friend. That's great, and that was just enough to crunch through the spine of this skeleton and it falls in half in the jaws of your cat, leaving a little more space to breathe. Mark and I are gonna head out. 
So Mark is moving this way. One, two, three. And I am, now I have my turn. I think what I'm gonna do is with one of my moves, I'm going to use my scurry skill. Okay. To scurry through the other people. Or scurry through the other people and get 20 feet away. Instantly, each of you decides. Five, one, yeah. two, three, four. Bye. Uh, and then I discard a card, and then I will. Um, I think I'm just going to use the, the little move icon on the bottom because these can always be just two move and uh, move to Mark. Bye. Next up are my living bones. <laughs> and with the the uh, terrain you. Up yes. Uh, they move at half speed. Right? Half speed. Yes. <laughs> more and more skeletons start to shamble down the stairs. You kill them. You you've been dispatching a couple of these now, but more seem to be filling the ranks as they just start coming down this choke point down these stairs. The terrain you have put up is slowing them, so they're not able to get to you yet, which is very helpful. Yeah. Uh, next up are my oozes. No. <laughs> I thought they were just fun props. Yeah. They're just attached to the wall. They don't move. No. Stop it. So this ooze that has started leaking from the walls and forming pools at the base has started to coalesce into these m sort of mounds that start to roll and squelch across the floor towards you, making this like <laughs> noise as it moves along the floor, picking up all sorts of debris. And inside of them, you can see little bits of bone and maybe a skull in one of them that has been like picked up and seems to be dissolving things as it goes. One of them is in range of mark. Yeah. So we're gonna do a flip a card here. Huh. <laughs> That's going to be a crit. What? Oh, Mark. Mark. That will be a times two damage. That's going to be four points of damage towards Mark. Oh, gosh. We hate to see it. <laughs> now Mark only has as many HP as Simon does. <laughs> <laughs> Mark's pretty tanky. But this sort of gelatinous uh, cephalopod tendril shoots out and slaps across the face of Mark, leaving this kind of sizzling residue along its flank. Oh, and cats hate it when you step on them. Yeah. They hate it. Michelle, your turn. Okay, things are looking bad. Bad time to get going. I activate formless power. Uh, <laughs> I'm cool. I got like a little tiny, it's like a sword, but it's, I don't use it very much. You can tell it's just like a prop that like doesn't touch other things. Um, <laughs> I whip it out and I'm first gonna do my attack against, uh, I guess this, this little blobby. Sure. Um, so that's going to be, it's part one. Three damage. So I kind of just slice him a little bit. But the second part of Formless Power is that I can take uh, two, up to two elements and uh, change them into uh, plus one attack for each element of oh, the cool. range of one. So um, that's going to be. Uh, I activate the power, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> of the grounds and of fire. So you see some of those elements that were shifting in the air get sucked back into me and back, uh, come back out in my blade and slap this little slime uh, with these respective powers. I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, I pulled one card for this first damage. Do I pull more cards for the secondary damage as well? I believe that damage is added to- To just the first one. To the first one. That's what I thought. Okay, so that's two, three, Four and five to do this. To that little blobo. little blobo guy. What does this energy look like for you? Um, it's sword shaped, but fire and earth colored. <laughs> okay. So this this blade fires towards the thing. This flaming blade that starts to like leave sort of like burning leaves that trail off behind it slams into this ooze and it immediately engulfs in fire and starts to writhe in place and kind of flattens out on the ground and it looks charred and burnt but it starts to like and just kind of come back it looks severely hurt as much as you could tell when it ooze was hurt but it's still going they're a little strong guys so just uh, keep aware <laughs> uh, i'm gonna take the bottom of this card and move four Okay, okay, we're leaving, right, boss? All right, one. Can I go through it? No, you have to go around. Ugh, one, two. Is this a three here? Three, yeah. and then four. I know, I'm such an inconvenience, I'm this sorry. It's very inconvenient, and then I still have this card activated for pulsing cores. Yes. Um, next, I can pick a fire, or sorry, a wind or a leaf ground type. And yeah. I will pick, I'll pick leaf type again, so that gives. Great. Yep. 
now. Yes, so Meadowhawk is here over this grate, and since everybody is like running away from where we came from, they've figured out this is the goal. This is yeah. where we're trying to get to. Um, they've summoned this angry swarm of wasps that have come like as separated from the the collective as a whole and i'm going to use this the bottom of this card for scattered defense okay. granting one of my summons a plus two to their movement okay they already have a four to their movement All right so they buzz forward one two three four five and six right okay. yeah they move past this ooze and get to a, a, an advantageous position for the entire swarm because it attacks all adjacent allies and enemies. Perfect. So we moved out of the way, um, but they'll suffer plus uh, two damage. Okay. Uh, and I'll use the top of this card for a call of the grave. Mm -hmm. Grant all your summons adjacent to the target, the attack ability of plus two for that. And then I'm gonna hey. roll for it as well, or draw for it. Plus zero. Okay. But so what is the total? The total uh, attack that it does is two and four. 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 Great, great, great. So it's for both of those. For both of those. And they start stinging, stinging. into this ooze. Kind of, <laughs> and you can and see like the ripples forming across the ooze as these insects impact with it. And, and we can even lose some. some yeah, right? yeah, some I don't come back out, they get stuck in the thing, but you, <laughs> these insects start to swarm over the oozes and kind of almost like gunk them up mm. and stop them. And they are definitely, not happy. They start <laughs> trying to kind of swat at the bugs and they're definitely distracting them enough to ignore your compatriots. Nice. So that, I think, is the end of that round. All right, everyone has their initiatives. Give them to me. Uh, 11. 11. Uh, 26 for me. 26. 27. 27. 18. 18. Ooh. All right, first up is going to be Meadowhawk. Meadowhawk, thank you, and you all move before the enemies do. All right, um, with Meadowhawk, I'm gonna use the bottom half of this card for like the movement of two, but really what I'm going to be doing is securing a place for us to go to. Okay. So I'm gonna check out, you said it was a great- There's a grate like, in the floor there. Is it also able to be lifted? Jack, you can go and lift it. Yeah, I'll do that if it's easy. Yeah. And then my movement then would be to move into it at all. Yeah. Um, and then for my other card, I'm going to use the top part of it, grant one of your summons, which is over yeah. there, uh, the ability to move or attack, and I'm gonna grant it the attack ability. Okay. So uh, it gets its plus two for attacking each of them. Great. I'll roll for it. Plus zero again. Oh. But that's so, fine. So two? Uh, two uh, to both of those yeah. oozes. So the insects have continued to sting and swarm these oozes, and it's now gotten so gunked up with these insects, they actually kind of have slowed the movement down completely, and you just start to see the venom from these bugs that have been stinging. Has You can see it kind of floating through the ooze, and kind of like almost like necrotic veins are starting to spread through, and both of them have stopped moving. This is actually how we reproduce. <laughs> gross. <laughs> That's a gross way to live. <laughs> but so far those oozes have stopped moving. Whether they're dead or not, you don't know, but they've kind of frozen this point. So then, uh, Michelle. Uh, Grob is tired of this life. Um, Grob. <laughs> I activate Malleable Evocation. I love a card game, guys. I'm just gonna keep saying that. Uh, it means I can heal someone for plus two up to three away. So I believe uh, little baby boo is upset, right? Yeah. Missing, why is Mark missing more than two? Yeah. Man, get two. Yeah, getting two. Oh, Free a charge. And then I'm going to do uh, the, the, my second card. Move. Move, my butt. So that's going to be, uh, one, two, and then I get a plus one if one or more elements are strong or waning. And they are, great, type so you're just about there. There you go, it's your turn. So I'm going to do some craziness here. I'm going to try in a uh, provoking roar. Ooh. I'm on a provoking roar, one, two, three away. Uh, and I'm just gonna taunt it. Hey. And I'm like, hey, you, who's in the wall? You never had a family before. Ooh, <gasps> devastating. Yeah, look at that. It's going down. Yikes. And then I'm going to immediately run seven away. <laughs> Turn tail immediately. <laughs> you, the gate is now open, so you can kind of duck in there now. Yeah, I'm gonna do a little roll down. Tuck and, tuck and roll in there. Great. I, I missed something my last turn, actually, I forgot. What did you do? I forgot to act to reactivate my pulse and cores. Oh, yeah, go I still ahead. had a lot do of this thing, going yeah. on, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw, I have an option of uh, a sun and, and moon. And so, light and dark, yeah. Light yeah. and dark. Do light. Do light, okay. 
Oh, okay. Now it is Mark's turn. I'm gonna stay away from the bees, uh, and then we'll, he'll just move then. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's a cool noise that he makes. What I am going to do is uh, command a spirit swap, which means that uh, Mark is going to move another, okay. and then I can spend this uh, leaf yeah. mm -hmm. to teleport to an adjacent hex. Hey! Um, I think you're already down there, right? Yeah. So I can so probably... Would be available. Yeah, so theoretically, yeah, you just boom, you're down there now as well. I'm down there now as well. I do have two more movements, so let's just say we're out of yeah. here. So, because none of these enemies have the ability to move to catch up with you at this point, none of them can move fast enough. We're gonna call the combat to a close here that you have escaped. You are down the hatch and into the sewers and you continue running. My and bees! My bees. <laughs> the bees follow you down, they come back. So as you continue down these tunnels and the smell is just pervasive, it is everywhere, you are starting to see, you see traces of the, the slime and everything, like just these trails, almost like giant snails have come through there, but this is that same sticky substance that those oozes were made out of. But you don't see any of the oozes, you just see the residue they left behind. It seems that whatever is happening on the surface might have possibly come from down here, but they are now up on the surface. You continue to run through tunnels. You're looking for a way out, some way back to the surface. But you seem to keep going lower and lower with no way out. As you continue moving, you start to hear a rumble. The sound of something big and heavy moving. And as you turn a corner in these tunnels, you come to a large sort of open cistern. This big chamber in the tunnels, which has a lot of different, I guess, other tunnels that lead off of it. And in the center of it is this large mass of that is just pulsating in the center. And you see as you move into the room, staying close to the side of the wall and seeing this just huge puddle of liquid. It starts to move and starts to rise up. And the ooze tape starts to take the shape of this ghoulish woman that starts to form and starts looking around the chamber and it turns its massive head and looks directly at the tunnel that you were all standing in. And at that point, you just hear a large, rumbling voice say, You, you have what I'm looking for. And the giant hand reaches towards you and that is where we're going to end this session. Oh! oh! What do we have? Uh, <laughs> I, I, I have some popcorn. Maybe uh, yeah, I want yeah, some yeah. popcorn. Ooh, That's yeah. incredible. I've got Thank, other bugs. Thank you very much, everybody, for playing this game with me. Yeah, this game yes. was a lot of fun. I enjoyed the system very much. Um, me too. If you wouldn't mind just introducing yourselves one more time so that people know who you are. I'll go first. I'm Xander Genre. You can find me at Xanderific with two R's and one F. Uh, catch me all over on Twitch, on YouTube, here sometimes, uh, and I've had so much fun. Yeah. Hi, I'm Michelle and Bradley. I had so much fun playing this. Uh, I, I love a card game. Um, mm -hmm. You can find me on the internet at I am Chevy Bunny and all my platforms. I'm also a producer and host at Tabletop News. I am Laser Weber, and I am Laser the Boy everywhere, and I've got live shows and music yeah. and musicals. Check me out, Laser the Boy. What's going on, y'all? It's your boy Joe Johnson, aka Black Nito. You can find me at Black Nito underscore everywhere, and also Tabletop Jocks. Not to be confused with Tabletop News, but although we still friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Got you. <laughs> See that? See that? <laughs> Boom. Thank you all for playing with me, and thank you at home for watching. Uh, once again, I am Alexander Ward, and this is Good Time Society. And if you want to play the Gloomhaven RPG, there is a campaign going on right now, and there is a link down below. And if you're watching this video from the future, hello from the time period in which we filmed it, uh, you can find the game anywhere. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Bye. 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 Bye.